Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is all about the king of the GPUs, the GeForce GTX Titan, the world's most powerful GPU with 2,688 CUDA cores clocked at over 800 megahertz. <laughs> All of this while staying within the same power envelope as the previous GTX 680, 250 watts. Hi, speaking of high performance thermals, there we go. The vapor chamber cooler on this card is, has an extended fin stack that actually goes beyond the vapor chamber plate itself. This gives it better performance and makes it look pretty freaking cool because you've also got a polycarbonate window that allows you to see the fin stack that's made of aluminum on top of the copper vapor chamber. It also has some of the most advanced fan control that has ever been available on a graphics card, but more on that later because it ties in very closely to GPU Boost 2.0 right here. So GPU Boost 1.0 took the uh, total power that the card was allowed to consume and would scale your graphics frequencies and your voltages up and down according to staying within that limit. For GPU Boost 2.0, which is right now only available on the Titan, NVIDIA went, okay, back to the drawing board with this. Instead of making it power related, let's make it related to temperatures because temperatures and voltages are what kill GPUs, not necessarily the overall power consumption of the board. So now, if you have thermal headroom left on your card, say for example, if you were using water cooling, your card would just boost itself up as high as it could possibly go and just stay there. You just have to keep temps under control. So dynamic voltage, ah yes, okay. All the GPU Boost 1.0 features and increased max voltages and average higher clocks because it uses much tighter control and is based on temperatures. So this is a, an example of what you might see where you can actually see, you can see all the white ones are the original GPU Boost 1 settings and the green ones are the GPU Boost 2 settings. So you can change your max voltage above NVIDIA's recommended reliability voltage and you can also still have a power target or you can have a temp target or you can even link them together and sort of use both as a general guideline. So GPU Boost 2 takes your base clock and gives you a significantly higher boost whenever there's power to spare because of that temperature thing I talked about before. Display overclocking. This is another thing that has been added with GTX Titan. You can tell the NVIDIA driver, hey, I don't want my frequency on my monitor to be 60 hertz. I want it to be a higher refresh rate. You can try it. Dial in 70, dial in 80, dial in 90. See what your monitor is capable of. Without image quality degradation, some monitors are capable of running significantly higher than what they shipped at. However, NVIDIA is not guaranteeing that your monitor warranty will still be valid if you do things like this, because just like any overclocking, it can affect the reliability of the components, and it might not even work at all. But at least the option's there, and you can try it out. And of course, VSync on. So now, rather than having you know, a GPU that can push 100 FPS on a monitor that can do 60 Hertz and you have to either pick between capping your frame rate or seeing tearing because the frame rate's going above the refresh rate of the monitor, now you can get the best of both worlds. Turn your monitor up, turn on adaptive VSync so that whenever it goes way up there, you won't get any, you won't get any tearing on the screen. And when it goes below, then it turns VSync off so that you can see all the frames that you're supposed to see. So those two features together will enhance the smoothness of your gaming experience, which leads us to performance. We're going to focus on Crisis 3 in a 4.4 GHz 3770K equipped system, such as the G3 right here next to me. So at 1080p, DirectX 11, very high, with 8 times anti-aliasing and 16 times anisotropic filtering, the GTX Titan gets 75.5 FPS, losing in our test here only to the GTX 660 Ti SLI. At 1600p, that is 2560 by 1600, we see the Titan pull ahead even of the SLI cards. This is, could partly be due to the fact that it has a huge 6 gig frame buffer, and as you push up resolutions, the card that doesn't have a huge frame buffer actually doesn't have as much room to store the textures that are needed for large format displays. Which brings us finally to our, whoops, 
Stereo 3D, okay, not finally, we have two more slides. So that brings us to Stereo 3D, where the Titan again loses a little bit to the 660 Ti SLI. And last but not least, our surround benchmarks. So in surround, the Titan puts up a pretty good showing here as well. However, we see that Crisis 3 is still a very demanding game, especially once you start to amp up the resolutions. So without further ado, this is the Titan at a value price of only $1,000. So no, not everyone can afford it, but if you want the fastest single GPU card on the market, this is it, baby. Thanks for watching this episode of NCIX Tech Tips, and don't forget to subscribe.